we have to talk about Bean Dad. Okay, listen, listen, listen. Let's cool down. Let's calm down. All right? Let's cool down and calm down and talk about it. Ready? Here we go. Bean Dad. Now, you know, you all know that I got the fucking receipts. Because Bean Dad deleted his account. Now, you might be wondering... I doubt any of you are wondering this. Who the fuck is who the fuck is Bean Dad? Well, you're about to find out who the fuck Bean Dad is. Can we get a Bean emote? No, I don't want to. I don't want to. I listen. Mr. Bean must pay for his sins. Okay. So this is a guy named John Roderick. He's a musician. He did the um, he did the main theme song for my brother, my brother and me. Um. But now they are no longer using his song anymore after some terrible things. But we'll get there, all right? This is who he is. That's why he's relevant. He also ran for city council here in my home city, I found out. Didn't know that until recently. Oh, thank you so much, McMuffins. I agree. I do. I, I hope that I get more followers and subs and likes. And if you haven't liked the stream yet, please consider liking the stream and join the Discord. The Discord is where you get the direct notifications. It's super cool. The Discord is awesome. Anyone who's in the Discord will tell you how much fun we have. Now, we actually hang out in general quite a lot. It's awesome. You won, Brit Mouse. Good job. Bean Dad. Bean Dad. Here we go. So yesterday, my daughter, Nine, was hungry, and I was doing a jigsaw puzzle. So I said over my shoulder, make some baked beans. She said, how? Like all kids do when they want you to do it. So I said, open a can and put it in the pot. She brought me the can and said, open it. How? With a can opener, I said, incredulous to your nine-year-old daughter. She brought me the can opener, and we both stared at it. I realized I'd never taught her how to use it. Hey, thank so you, you so much, you Hopeful. Up, really okay. appreciate those five, gift, five gifted tier one subs. Thank you so very much. Very kind of you. Thank you, Hopeful. I realized I'd never taught her to use it. Most cans now have pull tops. I felt like a dope. What kind of apocalypse father doesn't teach his kid how to use a manual can opener? So I said, how do you think this works? She studied it and applied it to the top of the can sideways. She struggled for a while and with a big dramatic sigh said, Will you please just open the can for me? Apocalypse Dad was overjoyed. A teaching moment had just dropped in my lap. I said, The little device is, d is designed to do one thing. Open cans. Study the parts. Study the can. Figure out what the can opener inventor was thinking when they tried to solve this problem. The can opener is also a bottle opener, but I explained that part wasn't relevant. I went back to my jigsaw puzzle. She was next to me grunting and groaning trying to get the thing. I should say that spatial orientation, process visual visualization, and the order of operation are not things that she intuits she's she's nine she's not nine she's nine anyway i knew this would be a challenge but it was a rainy weekend eventually she collapsed in a frustrated heap i said explain the parts she said this little wheel is meant to cut these gears turn the wheel when you spin the handle this other wheel looks like a gear but it isn't she couldn't figure out the clamping step a key element I said, the tool is made to be pleasing, but it doesn't have any superfluous qualities. Everything that moves does so for a reason, she said. Uh, for a reason. She said, I hate you. I'm sure she believes that, I d that she does. I said, you understand everything except how the tool addresses the can. How would a nine-year-old know what this fucking means? You understand everything except how the tool addresses the can? Holy shit, she sighed. At this point... She said, I don't want baked beans, and marched off. Apocalypse Dad went into full the road mode. Sweetheart, neither of us will eat another bite today until we get into this can of beans. She screamed, Ugh! like Lucy Van Pelt. She read a book for a while. Soon enough, she was back at the can. The top was all dented now. The lip of the can practically serrated from failed attempts. We studied, we studied the tool some more. She really wanted it to be oriented up and down or across the top of the can. The sideways orientation is very counterintuitive. 
No, it isn't. This is not, that is not counterintuitive. It, especially if you've ever seen an automatic cop, uh, an automatic, um, what's it called? Can opener? It's not counterintuitive. Like, I disagree with that there. It really isn't. Anyway. She was fixated on orienting the tool in a few configurations and couldn't imagine other possibilities. I compared the can opener to other tools. By now, we were working on anger management and per per perseverance, too. She suggested she open the can with a hammer. There were then tears. I really think it's what Merrick said, a young guy that doesn't realize what he's saying yet. Hopefully in 10 years, he'll realize the cringe. Thank you, three. Thank you very much for that very generous donation. Thank you so very much. Really appreciate that. I told her stories of some of the great cans I'd opened over the years. She rolled her eyes. I would too. We talked about industrial design and what a funny little device the can opener is. I showed how I opened cans with a buck knife. I rhapsodized about cold SpaghettiOs straight from the can. Eventually, she had it all figured out. She had the placement of the tool. She could turn the handle, and the can would spin. We were down on the floor by this point, but the kachunk of puncturing the lid still eluded us. We'd been at it for six hours on and off. We were hungry. I'd been tempted many times along the way to guide her hand. I want her to experience the magnificence of the can opener so much I couldn't stand the suspense. Neither of us likes baked beans that much. The cupboards are bare, so it seemed like a paltry reward for this work. I'd forgotten how finicky the tool really is, particularly when it comes to the puncture. She had it all lined up, but the cutting wheel is a little wobbly by design, and you have to really get on top of it to clamp it down. You know the feeling? You can misfire the damn thing. Finally, she squeezed down on it, and although it was a misfire, a light went off on her head. Many times throughout the day, she'd yelled at me, My brain is fuzzy! I can't think of anything else to try! And I'd say, When your brain doesn't work, trust your hands. She felt the tool click over the tip of the li of the can. I saw it in her hands. By this point, she developed a little ritual of addressing the tool to the can, starting with it on a virtual vertical axis and rotating it to the horizontal while clamping down in a single motion, a choreography. She looked at me expectantly, excitedly. After six hours of trying, thank you very much. As a child development major, a father and a teacher, this guy makes me cringe so fucking much. Me too. Thank you very much for the very generous $5. Thank you, Comrade Anthony. Thank you. The can had been through hell, label ripped off, dented, sharpened, and burred. A veteran of a thousand psychic wars. She knew, though. She set up again, carefully, and brought the swing away to bear on the can of an S&W baked beans with the meticulousness of Roger Moore extracting a detonator from an ICBM in The Spy Who Loved Me. A soft pop resounded in the room, so different from all the other sounds we'd made. She didn't even look up. She knew the action. A little baked bean sauce had appeared. She savored each twist until the lid, as I hoped it would, rewarded her by standing perfectly at attention, saluting her effort and ingenuity. She was elated and carried it to the kitchen in both hands. She knew this was a commonplace task and a common tool, but also that this was serious business. She knows her dad and the stock I put in these things. A more mechanically inclined kid might have figured it out in minutes. She factored the scale, but was rightfully proud. I'm proud of her, too. I know I'm infuriating. I know this is a parenting theater in some ways. I suffer from a lack of perseverance myself, and like all parents through history, I'm trying to correct my own mistakes in the way I educate my child. She sees through this. The swing away can opener is a little voodoo doll for us now. It will reappear as an allegory many more times in her life. You can be sure of that. She knows this, too. But this is an allegory of triumph. I wish I had more of those for myself. I wish I had more stories like this. The only problem now is that she wants to open every fucking can in the house. Now, my dear imps, was this not a saga? How much do we even have to talk? Oh my God, how much do we have to talk about? Everything about this entire engagement is just so absolutely fucked up. Not only, oh my God. So my first thought when I said this was like, can you imagine if every single time you wanted to learn something in life, you had to return to monkey in order to learn it? Did you know that being able to teach one another 
in expedient manners is what makes it possible for us to, you know, actually advance. That if every human had to reinvent the wheel every single time they wanted to learn something, it would be completely ridiculous. The world is so full of information, of things to be fascinated about, of incredibly complex systems that take so much brain power that no one human can possibly know everything. So we have specialized knowledge, we have experiences that we can share with one another. Our ability to teach one another is incredible. And let me tell you, imps, oh my mother fucking God, is this not the way to teach your fucking kid? This is the way to traumatize your kid. This is the way to make your kid hate your motherfucking guts. Um, there was a really great little post uh, I saw here. Let me just uh, Let me just do this one. Anybody familiar with the game Hades? You'll never open the beans, child. 100% true. If you've played Hades, this is the truest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. 100%. That was, this is the first thing I thought of. When I read the thread, I was laying in bed and I hadn't seen this meme yet. And the first thing I thought of was Hades. And then somebody made this meme and I was like, we're on the same fucking, boink. We're on the same fucking, uh, Hades is a horrifically abusive father who thinks that the best way to teach you is to constantly scream at you and beat beat your shit in. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great ass game. Delinky, uh, I have it I have it saved. I'll have to do it for you. But unfortunately, Bean Dad, the saga of Bean Dad gets Oh, do you have the actual source? What's this? Is this the one? Uh, yes, yes, unironically, Windleby. Holy shit. Let me let me put this one up on screen. Unironically, true. Unironically, true. Hold on a second. I gotta put this meme up that you just sent. True. Yes. Yes. When you understand everything about except how the tool addresses your trauma, Shinji. This is so true. Painfully true. I love it. I love it. The bean bean dad saga. So Bean Dad is, I think we can all agree, Bean Dad is kind of a giant asshole. He just wanted to do his puzzle and he didn't want to teach his kids something that would take them two minutes. And it's funny because there's this idea of like hyper individualism, like, oh, she'll never forget how to use a can opener. Um, how many of you have never forgotten how to use a can opener, even though your parents just showed you how to use it? My parents just showed me how to use a can opener. And not only that, not only did I understand how to use the can opener, I also understand how the can opener works because my parents said, here's how it goes. Quick, quick, quick. Oh, okay. And, and it's funny. He insults his daughter all along the way. Um, he insults his daughter all along the way. It's really funny. Um, the entire way he's like negging the shit out of his daughter. And it's one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. And to me, that's like one of the weirder parts. Like I get it. Like if you have a bad idea of how to teach your kid. Oh boy. Here we go. Let's watch. Wait, we got, we got an alternative bean dad. We've got alternative bean dad on the, on the timeline. Let's check it out. Let's check out the alternative bean dad. No! Twitter video, fuck you! God damn it, Twitter video. Why is Twitter video like this? Oh, grab that. Wait. Grab that one. What? And what does it do? Oh. Look! <gasps> See? I told you, the part where he says it's not intuitive, it is intuitive. This is a horizontal bar. It looks like it's supposed to grab it. I understand that. It's really ridiculous that he would dunk on his daughter for thinking that. It makes sense. It looks like it clamps around it. Oh, what? <laughs> it's your snack. Are you fucking glass? What? Are you fucking glass? What? <laughs> <laughs> Are you fucking glass? What? <laughs> Grab that. <laughs> One hundred percent. Are you a fucking clown? Oh, oh, oh my god. Oh, oh, oh my god. That girl is gonna be a YouTuber someday. That girl is gonna be a comedian someday. I can tell you right now. Are you a fucking clown? True. 
true. Yes. Oh, Jim Sterling's was also really good. Here, let's bring Jim Sterling's on before we get to the really dark shit. All right. Listen. <laughs> you cheated not only the beans, but yourself. True. True, Jim Sterling. Yeah, Jim Sterling was amazing. I put the curse on the kid. You're doomed to be a YouTuber someday. Or a comedian. Oof. Yeah, they're amazing. Jim Sterling's amazing. Um, so, yeah. Bean Dad. Uh, Bean Dad is an asshole. Uh, Bean Dad does not understand how, like, teaching works. And also, the worst part of it is that Bean Dad is just a horrible dick to his, uh, to his fucking daughter. Like, holy shit. Um, holy fucking shit. Can you imagine just, like, your kid, like, actually being hungry and just being like, Hey, Dad, can you teach me how to do this? And he just won't because he wants you to fucking struggle with it? That's, like, sadistic. You could teach your kid how everything works in about five minutes. Did he get clout? I don't know. I don't think this is going to work out well for him. For six hours. Now, there's always, listen, there's always the chance this is fake. But the effort put into this makes me think it's not fake. All the while, he's doing his fucking jigsaw puzzle now there are moments where you can learn a lot of stuff but here's this oh yeah we're gonna do that next vermin we're gonna do that next don't you worry don't you worry we got that um when the sun goes down anyway what am i doing i'm getting square brained i'm square braining i'm, I'm square braining square brain let's get let's focus bean dad um is yeah so this is not how you teach children please for the love of god don't teach your children like this children can be taught lovingly without starving them and traumatizing them and without making them hate you when she says she hates you it's because you are being an asshole you're talking down to her yeah obviously she's a nine-year-old she has never done industrial design yeah, I, it's so weird, Pasachan, I agree. There are some weird writers out there who think that, like, the way that you do this is to, like, like have a Thatcherian view of, like, child, you will never learn the true way of the world if you don't go work in the mines at age nine so that you can understand gravity. Listen, the reason we're not, like, it lost in the woods, the reason why we're not fucking, like, monkeys that are constantly dying from random poison berries is because we can teach each other. If the only way you could learn was from direct experience, we would never advance beyond monkey. You would have to have, okay, children, go out, go eat random poison berries, and maybe they'll kill you and you might survive. It would just be chance. We can teach and we can improve. And as a result, we're able to do amazing things like have, um agriculture and computers and streaming and video games and film and all kinds of wild shit that we can do as a result of being able to teach one another because as it turns out being able to teach each other lets us uh demystify things it lets us make sense of things to one another bean dad's approach is one of laziness smugness and quite frankly it seems you know i'm not gonna say it's abusive but it seems pretty fucking negative this is not going to like help the kid this is only going to hurt the kid not only is she going to have hunger and by the way severe hunger that's being imposed on you directly is traumatic just so you know um there's a thing there's a, this is an anecdote and i don't want to overstate it because it is only six hours but just so you know hunger tends to stick with you there's this thing um how many of you has anyone in chat ever gone hungry in their life has anyone in their their like ever gone hungry like for a serious reason like you know you know money or whatever i have it never leaves you it never leaves you you will forever have a deep seated fear of that hunger and it can lead you to overeating but your body is designed to make you fear that it is the most basic biological urge and if you've ever gone hungry you will never like that will like never leave you you can learn to manage it but the fear will never leave you i've gone hungry multiple times in my life and i get scared like if i'm low on money i get scared because it's like oh shit i could go hungry again yes it is it's like a shadow yep you're right louis baton that's a good way of wording it that sounds like it might be like camus or something like that but yes it is true going hungry is one of the single most traumatic experiences that any person can experience it's that's a fact that is a, a psychological fact using hunger as a tool for teaching is about one of the most unhealthy ways 
uh, yeah, no problem, is one of the most unproductive ways to teach someone you could possibly imagine. But it doesn't just go there, you know? We can talk about, uh, we could talk about Bean Dad's bad parenting all we want, but we have, um, you know, we have some things to think about. Wait a second. Bean Dad is one of the best examples of positive punishment I've ever seen. Mind you, positive punishment isn't a good thing. I don't know if the story is real, but positive pun punishment can be abuse, especially when it involves food. One of the most disordered things we have in our society. I agree. In instructional scaffolding. That's how you challenge children in a healthy way. Yeah, video games have ways of teaching you things that challenge you that don't just, like, kick you in the face. Yeah. Sending them to bed without demon? Yeah, sending them to bed without dinner is horrible. It's horrible. Not only can you not sleep, but it will traumatize you for life. It's terrible. Yeah, exactly. Real life isn't an 80s adventure game. It's terrible. Like, I honestly, this is just so bad. Yeah, he's trying to look clever and smart, but he's actually just revealing that he's kind of an, a like an abusive asshole. He's <laughs> sending him to bed without a demon. True. Um, but, but let me just show you a little more of this because it, it does get a little more wild. I want to show you um, the beginning, the beginning of the wildness, all right? If you're not familiar with Bailey J, she's only America's preeminent transsexual adult film star and nerd gamer. Plus, she's hilarious. And you might go, okay, okay, all right, that's not, not that big of a deal. All right. Fair enough, he's just plugging a friend. But it gets worse. It gets worse. What if this guy's tweets are what keeps Ken Jennings from hosting Jeopardy? Oh, wait. Oh, this isn't the right screenshot. Shit. Hold on. I can bring this up on twi Twitter. Hold on. I can bring this up on Twitter. Hold on a second. Hold on. I got to bring it up on Twitter. I didn't realize I fucked up the screenshot. I'm so sorry. Watch this. Here we go. I'll get him. I'll get him. I'll get him. Here we go. Wait, where's the one? There we go. My armored car arrived and, surprise, full of Jew lawyers. We're taking the guns, taxing, and then suing the survivors. Uh-oh. Stinky. Oh, shit. Bought another yacht with the luxurious hey. mod money. Thank you. Cheers. Appreciate that, human being. You don't have to give it back to me, you know. You can just keep it. <laughs> It sucks when people get off on a technicality like, well, your Fourth Amendment rights were violated. Go cry to your mommy. The Fourth has been perverted by activist Jew judges, mud people apologists. The founders intended the USA as a white homeland. Sorry, let me move my camera for a second. Holy shit. Holy shit. No, he doesn't, Posadas John. Sorry. Nah. Ba Bailey J's old news. There's so many good trans porn stars out there. Anyway, let's go in. Not to judge. No judge. No judge I don't know anything about Bailey J. But there's better. Listen. Maybe the white half of you that went to law school can get the black half out of jail on some boo-hoo technicality. I don't think so, gay fish. I don't think so. I'm so gratified that the multiple conversations I'm having about the asshole Daniel Tosh are for the most part sane and civil. Bravo. I'm going, and then at somebody, I am going to rape you the next time I see you. Bad rape, not funny rape. Uh, um, um, ex excuse me, dude? Uh, ex ex I'm sorry, there, is there, oh, see you later, comrade Anthony. Um, is this r real? Okay, Bean Dad. And, and and you know what? Unfortunately, there's some more too. There's some more. It's a special moment whenever a juggalo first realizes that no Jews died on 9-11. There are so many points of entry. Unironic JQ posting. This is unironic JQ posting. 
Holy shit, Bean Dad. Holy shit. So those are the ones that I was able to collect before everything went to hell. If anybody has any other, what is JQ posting? The Jewish question. The Jewish question refers to a, uh, a conspiracy that led to the Holocaust. Yeah. Yeah. The juggalo part? I don't know. I think he's just using that as a general turn. We cannot call him the Bean Dad. My cat's name is Bean and I am his dad. I will not stand for this selling. Very well. We will call him Bean Nazi. He is no longer Bean Dad. He is now Bean Nazi. Fuck you, Bean Nazi. So, Bean Nazi... Um... Uh, Bean Nazi is uh, a very strange fellow. He uh, has a very weird approach to parenting. He, what's this one? This is what confuses me. What is this? What have you sent me? Is this an is this an interview with Bean Nazi? Oh boy! Wait, I can't play this right because this is gonna get slapped right. Make America Great Again by the Long Winters. I don't know what this is. This is a song he wrote. Uh, what's he say about it? What's it about? Uh, make America great again. And I love baseball. I know America was built on immigration. All the immigrants. Were, what? I don't know. Lyrics are in the YouTube description. Okay. Well, I might not have a PhD, but those so-called elites aren't so smart. It's their do-what-you-want lack of morality that's tearing our country apart. Uh, this is literally, wait, this, wait a second. He's literally a Nazi. Holy shit. It's from the Volk, the people. The Volk, Volkish is a reference to Nazi obsession with folk history. This is literally Nazi signaling. Okay, I was kind of joking about the Nazi stuff, but being obsessed with Volkish, oh my God. Look, hold on, let me show you. Hold on. I can show you this. Look at this. The Volkish movement was a German ethnic and nationalist movement which was active from the late 19th century through to the Nazi era, erected on the idea of blood and soil inspired by the one body metaphor, the body of the people, the ethnic body, and the idea of naturally grown communities in unity. It was, it was characterized by organicism, racialism, populism, agrarianism, romantic nationalism, and by anti-Semitism from the 1900s onwards. Yes, but the, why would they use Volk there? What possible use could they have to capitalize the Volk? I know what they're referencing, but come on. Yes, but but Mithaldu, I recognize it is a German word, but we realize there's context. This guy isn't German. He's writing a song called MAGA and referencing the Volkish movement. Oh, that's fine. I'm sorry. My German is incredibly, it's so rusty. I only remember like four words. I barely know. Yeah, he's absolute. This is guy's a Nazi. 100%. Holy shit. Fucking bean dad. So yeah, uh, wait, we have more bean dad tweets. Oh, thank you. There were some that I wasn't able to grab. There were some that I wasn't able to grab before his account goes down. I grabbed all the core ones, but I didn't necessarily have all of them. Let's find out. What else do we got? Oh, shit. Hitler was entertaining. Okay. Wait, that was from 2015. These are even worse. Jews ruin everybody's fun. What? He's responding to Bailey J. Matt's soccer team was called the Stormtroopers, but the mothers of other teams made us change it because of the Nazis. Jews ruin everybody's fun. Dude, what the fuck? Seriously, though, you can say a band is gay or a haircut is retarded. Oh, shit! Ah! ah! Oh, fuck! Oh, fuck! Thank God we're not on fucking Twitch! Jesus Christ! What the absolute fuck? Yo! N-word Andy over here! Holy shit! 
I didn't even realize it. Uh, <laughs> well, let's just say I think we have enough to say, uh, if nothing else, Bean Dad's got some motherfucking problems. Wait, what did Gayfesh say? What do you got, Gayfesh? Wait, where's Gayfesh? Oh, is it? I don't know. Maybe you're right, Gayfesh. Maybe you're right. All right, listen. Maybe, listen, I'll be as, uh, as charitable as I possibly can, okay? Listen, I'll be as charitable as I possibly can. Maybe he was making fun of it in referencing that, but this seems really, really weird. Oh, my God. <laughs> Every time I use a word like gay or retarded, some gay retard reminds me those words are, are hurtful. Kyle Kalinsky. Don't say retarded or gay because that's retarded and gay. Oh. 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 No. Why is there a Kyle Kalinsky tweet for everything? To be fair, these were made in 2011 and 2013. And that is where I will be as charitable as possible. Thank you for reining me in, Ga uh, Gayfesh. Thank you for reining my mad mind in. To be fair, he did say most of these things quite some time ago. But let's be honest. These are some pretty yikes. These are pretty yikes. And his behavior towards his daughter is fucking inexcusable. Maybe he's not a Nazi. 2013 was yesterday to me. I mean, fair. Listen, 2013 was sooner than we all remember and further than we all like to think. Um, okay, yes, I know. I, I know, Vermin. But the thing is, I really don't... I Listen, they're a, they're a landmine, Vermin. They're a landmine. Going through any of Kyle Kalinske's old tweets is like is like trying to walk through a land landmine or a field... What's a, a minefield? A landfield. It's like going through a minefield, and I'm just getting. It's like it's like every second. It's just like, oh, that's TOS. That's TOS. I do want to show one more Bean Dad related thing, which is a take that I thought was really fucking good. Here we go. Ready? Ready? Here we go. People are criticizing the can of beans, Dad, but see no problem with sending kids to compulsory education for their entire youths, where they will be subjected to even more intense horrors for eight hours a day until their natural curiosity is completely broken. True! Actually, 100% true! Holy shit! Oh, I know he homeschools, but still. Fuck. Fuck. The way that we approach education is so motherfucking busted. And yeah, I would agree. Schools, the way they're structured, are abusive and very bad for learning. Our current school system is, is designed to be like a factory. And if you're even slightly neuroatypical, you get your neck choked. A lot of people um, stop giving a shit about school. If I followed my school, I'd be in CS and miserable. Everything I learned in high school, I'm now relearning the exact same content in college. It has to happen all the time. I've heard arguments that say that all people who went to public school have some level of PTSD. I would believe that. Did you know that it used to, do you want to know something that happened to me? You want, I can tell a bean dad esque story. All right, ready? Um, wait, an important survey. Let's take a look. What is this survey? What is this survey? Do we have a Praxis? Post this in the Praxis channel. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, that's pretty decent. All right, that's an important survey. There we go. Keep being strong, babe. These whiny children can't handle it so they're lashing out. P.S. Bean Dad behaves the exact same way my abuser did. Screw this guy. Thank you very, very much for that incredibly generous donation. And yeah, I really don't like the way I've been treated in all this. And I don't like the way other people have been treated because of, because of associating loosely with me. That's kind of fucked if you ask me. Um, but yeah, I agree with the idea that school causes some level of PTSD. And let me tell you a story. When I was in first grade, we used to do this kind of thing called minute math. Has anybody, did anybody else here have to do minute math? Does anybody remember minute math? Um, yeah, minute math was genuinely horrifying to me. Like I would get incredibly scared by it. And the thing is, um, 
I was getting very, very, very bad marks on, on my grades because of minute math. Now, it's not because I was bad at math, although I thought I was bad at math for a very long time afterwards. Oh, I'll explain it. Okay. Minute math is, it goes like this. Everyone in the class is given a randomized sheet of paper. At the front of the, of the room, the teacher will have a clock or, or a stopwatch or an alarm and will like usually an egg timer or a stopwatch or will use the clock and they will say, all right, papers down, pencils up, flip the paper. And then you have one minute to do as much math as you can on the paper before you're done. And you will be graded based on how many you complete. And it's very, very harsh grading. This was in first grade. Um, yeah, there's some minute spelling and stuff like that, but it's really high pressure and, and it's terrifying. And I would choke. I would get so nervous about the timing that I would forget how to do the math. And so for a while I was, I hated math. I thought math was the worst. Turns out later. Now here's, here's the secret. When I got in college later on, many years later in college, um, what started in high school, in high school, I still struggled with math until I had a teacher who finally took the time to actually explain things to me and make it made sense in a way that I understood. And then I went on to college to ace complex math courses. I got per almost perfect grades in Calc 3. I got a perfect 100% score in Calculus 2. So as it turns out, I wasn't actually bad at math. I just got nervous at the timing. Now it was a long way later. Um, yeah, I killed Calc 2. No joke, 100%. I killed Calc 2. It was amazing. Um, I had a little bit of a harder time with Calc 3, but that was because the homework load was bigger. Um, but yeah, for the longest time, I thought I was bad at math because I was so scared of... Um, minute math. Now, do you want to know what it was that um, taught me to be better at minute math? It was my babysitter. My babysitter said, watch this, okay? And she took me and she said, all right, here's what I want you to do. You're not being punished. You're not being punished, but I want you to sit right here and I want you to look at this filing cabinet that my dad had. It had nothing on it. It was a boring filing cabinet. She's like, I want you to look at that and you don't have to do anything. Just look at the filing cabinet and I'll come back in one minute. And I sat there and I stared at the filing cabinet and I started to get bored. And then my babysitter came back and she said, you, are you ready? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, that was only 30 seconds. You still have 30 more seconds. And I said, oh. And that made me realize to not be as scared of minute math. And it took someone actually taking the time to calm me down and teach me that, wait, a minute is a minute is actually an okay amount of time. You can do this. You don't have to be panicked. Hey, Xander Hall, good to see you. How you doing? Um, but yeah, that's what it took for me to learn how to actually do minute math. Did they have behavior cards where you had to move your, your card to yellow or red when you were misbehaving? No. But um, I did get in trouble uh for listen i got in trouble in school for really random things you're watching john wick oh you know what's funny i haven't seen john wick either i need to see john wick everyone's been telling me to watch it for so long i've i've uh, i've pretended that i'm like ha yeah john wick but i haven't seen it myself i do want to see john wick though did i go to pu pu private school or public school um okay so i've been to a million different schools my family moved a lot um, I mostly was, was raised in public schools, although I did go to a cult school for one year before I left. And then um, my high school, I was very lucky. And because of a loophole in my state's laws, I was able to go to a private school. Um, I was able to test into a private school and the state paid for it. So my family wasn't rich enough to send me to private school, but because of a loophole in the state laws, I was able to go to a private school um, that wasn't like a cult school. So yeah, I've changed schools so many times. I've been to so many different schools in my life. Um, it, basically pretend when you think about me, pretend that I'm a military kid. I moved a lot. I moved schools a lot. So yeah. Um, 
Was the private school better or worse than the public school? Private, the private school I went to was amazing. It was incredible, like absolutely wonderful. Now that it still had flaws, but it was really, really, really good. Um, and I learned a lot there. In fact, um, almost everything I learned that was like really important happened uh, there. Yeah. I didn't see the surf thing on it. Private schools unironically worth the money in regards to education. It depends on the private school, but yes, some private schools are actually worth it. And it's funny. Um, it sucks that this is the case, but it, let me explain this. The reason why public education sucks is and this is going to be really controversial, but the reason why public s schools suck is because Republicans defund public schools so that they can argue in favor of private schools. The reason why private schools are good is because public schools are choked for funds, like choked to death. Private schools do not have that problem because they have donors. Yeah, not just Republicans, conservatives in general. This is also, there are Democrats who do this as well. Um, public schools could be amazing and there are absolutely amazing public schools out there. It's just, they are choked for funds and have been for the last like 20 or 30 years. It's wild. We've had a complete defunding of public education over the last like couple decades.